No bird, plant, or animal is immune from the wild exaggerations and fact-challenge theories of evolutionists. This is certainly true for hummingbirds as well. David Attenborough is a high priest in the per pervasive efforts to spread evolution propaganda. His footprint is woven throughout Netflix, the internet, and elsewhere. He has added his blessings to hummingbirds in the documentary Hummingbirds Jeweled Messengers. Like all of Attenborough's productions, this program is long on claims of evolution and short on factual and scientific attribution. Three minutes into the hummingbird program, Attenborough claims that when flowers evolved over 60 million years ago, there were no hummingbirds. The first plants depended on insects for pollination, he says. But the insects are sluggish and slow moving, especially in mountain forests in South America where it's cool. His theory, the plants with their small brains and marvelous engineering abilities decided there was a need for a safer pair of wings. We may never know for certain when this change of messengers took place, he said. We may never know for sure, but it probably happened about 50 million years ago. The key word here is about. Attenborough then wants us to believe that the then clumsy hummingbirds with their extraordinary biological engineering skills evolved to suit their better ways of life. Over millions of years, their bills became lighter and thinner to better probe the flowers for nectar. The early hummingbird became smaller and more agile than its ancestors. They developed longer tongues too, or so the story goes. Their legs and feet became so small that they could no longer hop or walk. They could only perch. For many millions of years, hummingbirds remained generalists, feeding from a wide variety of flowers, we're told. What he is feeding us is not science, and it is not convincing. He is merely telling us to take his word for it, even though when push comes to shove, he can't prove any of this ever happened. It's more secular humanist worldview and indoctrination than actual science. Of course, that Writing in Nature magazine, one of evolution's so-called Bibles, Paul Young writes, Hummingbirds took just 22 million years to diversify from a single common ancestor into 338 tiny colorful species, and they have not finished yet. Further, Young writes, Evolutionary biologist Jim McGuire of the University of California, Berkeley, and his collaborators have found that although some hummingbird groups have saturated the available space in their environments, others are still developing into new species at an extraordinary rate. By comparing their rates of speciation and extinction, McGuire's team calculated that the number of hummingbird species could actually double before reaching an equilibrium in the next several million years. These results are published in Current Biology. And now the evolutionary plot thickens. Young writes that hummingbirds first evolved from a sister group, the swifts, around 42 million years ago. And again, the key word here is around. Young's article then claims hummingbird species in the Andes Mountains must have arisen within the past 10 million years. But now we find some divergence of opinions among the evolutionists. McGuire says hummingbirds cannot fly across oceans, but Attenborough has them flying more than 800 kilometers over ocean in a migration from Texas to the Yucatan Peninsula each year. The evolutionists are as wrong now as Darwin was in 1859 when he published his manifesto, The Origin of Species. And now we get to the truth. God created every winged thing on the fourth day. Let the water teem with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the sky. God created the hummingbird only a matter of a few thousand years ago. He created it in great diversity of size and color. There was no adaptation. There was no evolving. Science, by definition, is not naturalistic philosophy. Evolutionary biology's history is filled with examples of fraud, exaggeration, and falsehoods. Evolution has not been seen, nor has it ever been replicated in a lab. A hummingbird that took millions of years to develop a thinner beak, for example, would not have been able to thrive while in the process of adapting to its environment. Natural forces do not produce structures with high information content. When it comes to the origin of life, science is squarely on the side of creation by an intelligent agent. 
The fatal flaw in Darwin's theory is that once all genes for a particular trait have been selected, breeding can go no further. Breeding does not create new genes. A bird cannot be bred to grow fur, and a pig cannot develop wings. There is a natural barrier that no amount of breeding can cross. Darwin's rock pigeons can only remain rock pigeons. And the natural tendency of living things is to stay close to the original type. Luther Burbank, the greatest breeder of all time, regarded the law of reversion to the average, a law that keeps all living things within some more or less fixed limitations. Darwin's claim otherwise has not stood up to the breeding and laboratory experimentation. And furthermore, anything that is irreducibly complex cannot evolve in gradual steps, which refutes Darwinian evolution. So the next time you view programming, which includes unsubstantiated claims of evolution, not backed by any evidence or any attempts to provide evidence, be skeptical, question it, and know with confidence that it is an attempt to indoctrinate you with an atheistic, secular worldview. You can know with certainty that the God who created the universe created the hummingbird as it is, along with humans, plants, and animals. Evolution is a house of cards built on sinking sand.